too many times we're trying to do things only in our own strength, our own intellect, our own ability. That's going to limit us. God can see things that you can't see. He knows the right people who should be in your life. He knows where the danger is, where the dead ends are. God knows how to catapult you into your destiny. You have an advantage. Are you taking time for your daily bread? No, every morning you need to go to God for your daily bread, your daily wisdom, daily direction. Sometimes we rush out of the house. I'm in a hurry. I don't have time today, Joe. I got to get to work. I live by this principle. Never meet with other people before you meet with God. If you'll take time to acknowledge God, say, God, I need you today. Lead me, guide me, keep me on the right path. Not only will your day go better, but God will keep you from making mistakes. When you wake up in the morning, say thank you for grace. Thank you for mercy. Thank you for understanding. Thank you for wisdom. Thank you for parents. Thank you for love. Thank you for kindness. Thank you for humility. Thank you for peace. Thank you for prosperity. Say thank you in advance for what's already yours. True desire in the heart for anything good is God's proof to you sent beforehand to indicate that it's yours already. That itch that you have, whatever it is you want to do, that thing that you want to do to help others and to, to grow and to make money, that desire, that itch, that's God's proof to you sent beforehand already to indicate that it's yours. And anything you want good, you can have. So claim it. Work hard to get it. When you get it, reach back. Pull someone else up. Each one, teach one. Don't just aspire to make a living. Aspire to make a difference. I just became much more aware of time and how, how foolish it is to waste any day that you have. You know, there's something really interesting about time. We all get the same amount in a day. Every day is 24 hours. And some people are very, very fruitful and effective, and some people just waste their time day after day after day. And that's a choice that we make. But there's one thing about time. Once it goes by, you never get it back. So how tragic it is to waste any day of your life. I think we need to live every day like it was our very last one and live it to the absolute fullest that we can live it. What are some of your mornings like? Do you go to bed intending to get up and spend time with God, but then when the alarm goes off, you hit the snooze, and then you hit the snooze again, and then you hit the snooze again, and then you've laid in bed too long, and so then you get up. Of course, now you have no time for anything. You know you should have spent time with God. You didn't do it. And the whole day basically just becomes a nightmare. All I can tell you is if you don't spend time with God, you are going to have one tragic day after another, after another, after another, after another, after another. It's amazing what happens when you give God that first little bit of time. And I believe that you'll, be, you'll, you'll find your time with God so fruitful that then you'll start making ways to get more. Every day, we need to put on a fresh new attitude. You know why? Yesterday's attitude will get old. If you don't start afresh and anew, then you'll bring all the negative from yesterday into today. Every morning when you wake up, you need to say, Father, thank you for this day. Thank you that you woke me up. Thank you that you gave me air to breathe. Thank you that you surrounded me with favor. I'm grateful to be alive. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for opportunities. Lord, I'm going to live this day to the full. That's putting on a fresh new attitude. You wipe the slate clean. You let go of yesterday's disappointments, what didn't work out. You get your mind going in the right direction. I'm going to see the good today. I'm going to be kind to somebody. I'm going to stay in faith and enjoy this day. Make a plan to be a blessing. Plan ahead of time that when somebody offends you, you're going to forgive them immediately. Plan ahead of time to be quick to forgive. Plan ahead of time to give things away, to compliment people, 
to encourage people. Just get up in the morning and think, okay, Lord, here's my goal today. Everywhere that I go, I don't know how many people I'll see today, maybe 15, 20, 25, but every single person I see, I want to say a little something to them that will make them feel a little bit better than they were before I got there. I rise early to cry out for help and to put my hope in your words. He says, I start every morning talking to you, I cry out in prayer, and listening to you, I read your word. He says, I start my day with hope. Are you starting your day with hope or with despair? At some point, we have to look in the mirror and say, maybe I'm the one that needs to change. Maybe I've developed a habit of seeing what's wrong rather than what's right. Maybe I've trained myself to be negative, disrespectful, hard to get along with. That's why it's so important every morning to put on this fresh new attitude. I'm excited about this day. I don't have to go to work. I get to go to work. I'm grateful for this job. I'm not focusing on what's wrong. Lord, I want to thank you for what's right in my life. You need to do something to get your day started right. God, help me. Help me. I want to put on love. I want to go out of my house today and treat people right. I've got problems, God, and they tend to make me cranky. Don't let me take them out on other people. Make a plan to go out and behave yourself. Hey, Jesus died for us so we can have a great life, church. I want you to have the very best life that you can have. And there's a lot of lost people out there that don't know Christ. So let, let's get out in the world and, and be a, a living message to them. Let's preach at all times and only use words when it's necessary. Let's let our attitude and our actions do the preaching. You know, you can argue with words, but you cannot argue with consistent action. Mercy is kindness and kindness is mercy. And boy, we love the mercy of God, don't we? Oh my gosh, mercy is so amazing. That we can do things wrong and God just forgives us. That he never shuts us out of his life because we didn't do everything exactly the way he wanted it done. His mercy is new every day, every morning. And I figure that he makes a new batch every day because I used up all of yesterday's. This is why it's so important to get up in the morning and spend some time with God. Whatever you happen to be facing today or may face, I actually want you to call it Goliath because if you call it Goliath, then at least you know where it's going to wind up. This day is a gift from God. It is filled with possibilities, new ideas, new friendships. Am I going to live this day negative, sour, seeing the wrong, chip on my shoulder, or am I going to live it in faith, positive, hopeful, seeing the best, being good to people? This is a choice that we have to make every day. Life is too short to live negative, sour, letting circumstances dictate our attitude. Every morning you need to make the decision, this is another day the Lord has made. I'm going to live it in faith. I'm going to be positive. I'm going to see the best. I'm going to make the most of this day. Whenever you start your day, you need to start it with God. And you need to do some things on purpose. You need to make a decision. This is the day the Lord has made. I will enjoy this day. Make an announcement to the devil who is the joy thief. I will enjoy this day. I'm putting on my righteousness. I know who I am in Christ. I'm putting on my peace. Jesus gave me peace. I'm not going to get upset today if I don't get my way about everything. If getting things right with God, first thing when you get up, Whenever your morning is, if it wasn't important, then it wouldn't say it all over the Bible. Get up early in the morning and take care of the hard tasks. Get them out of the way first. Don't let some job you have to do threaten you all day and make you dread the day. David got up early the day he killed Goliath. Come on, you're not going to kill your giants laying in bed hitting the snooze button. I think every morning we need to dedicate ourselves to God. Let's look at Psalm 25 verse 1. Unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life, plain and simple. I get that psalm out very frequently and read it. I love Psalm 25, 1. Unto you, O Lord, do I bring my life. It's a great thing to do every morning. Just sit or stand or kneel or whatever you're comfortable and just lift up your hands and say, here I am, Lord, I'm yours. Every morning, we have to go to Him and say, God, show me my assignment. Show me what to do. Show me where to go. Give me the words to speak. Asking for wisdom for guidance, that's an act of surrender. 
It takes humility to say, God, you know what's best for me. I can't do this on my own. I need your help. Open the right doors, close the wrong doors, make the path clear. The scripture says, when you acknowledge God in all your ways, He will direct your path. But too often, we make our plans without consulting God. Then we ask Him to bless those plans. We wonder why it's a struggle, why it feels like it's always uphill. We have it backwards. We're making a move and then asking God for help. The right way is to ask God first. God, what do you want me to do? Should I date this person? Should I start this new project? Should I make this purchase? If you feel peace about it, then move forward. If not, hold off, knowing that God knows what's best for you. When every morning you ask God for wisdom, you are showing your dependency on Him. When you humble yourself like that, the scripture says, God will exalt you. A lot of people these days, they're too prideful, think I don't need any help. I can do this on my own. Joel, look at how successful I am already. Think about where you could be if you'd start acknowledging God. Think about the mistakes He could have saved you from. Think about the opportunity, the favor, the doors you couldn't open, but God can open. Don't do it on your own. That will limit you. Set your mind every morning. I'm going to be a peacemaker and a maintainer of peace. I'm going to be adaptable. If I don't get my way, then I'll just adapt and be happy. And extremely important, Galatians 10, be mindful to be a blessing. Spend a little bit of time every day thinking about something you can do for somebody else and do it early. Set your mind to compliment everybody you get around. Find something nice that you can say to them. We think sometimes, oh, that's, that's a nice outfit you got on, or boy, your hair is pretty. Well, why not open your mouth and say so? What you think doesn't bless anybody. The more you compliment other people, the better you feel. Make your mind up to compliment the person that you're married to at least five times today. Do you know your marriage could be saved if you'll do that? And not only that, people will respond to the positive things you say to them and they'll start wanting to make you happy.